You may have the fastest boat on the river, but someone tried to stop you from winning this race before you even left the wharf in New Orleans. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. You care for another drink, Mr. Paladin? No, thank you very much. You go ahead, though. Well, no, I, I guess I've had enough for the night, too. But Colonel Tolliver, why did you select me? Surely there are men along the river who can suit your purpose. Well, of course there are. Good men, too. But they're too well-known. I want a stranger for this job, a new face. It seems a lot of trouble and expense to go to. Nothing is too good for the queen. Very well, then, since you are agreeable to my terms, I am agreeable to the engagement. Excellent, sir, excellent. We should look forward then to seeing you in New Orleans by the end of the month. Hmm? Not later than the 30th. Fine, fine. Well, I, I'd better get up to my room and pack if I'm going to leave in the morning. Good night, Mr. Paladin. Good night, Colonel Tolliver. Have a nice trip. Thank you, sir. Um, hey, boy, you can come out from behind the palm now. The colonel's gone. Oh, he saw me, sir, Paladin. I was listening. Naturally. Uh, you go to work for a queen? Yes, the biggest queen you ever saw. Oh, what country is she queen of? Oh, not a country, hey, boy. She's a Delta queen. Delta queen? What is that? Mississippi Riverboat. The fastest Mississippi Riverboat since the Robert E. Lee. What you do with Riverboat? You'll be captain? Oh, no, no, hey, boy. I'm going to be her bodyguard. Have you noticed, Minna, the new houses all seem to be on one floor? I'd like that. With nagging backache and the muscular aches and pains I've had lately, it's no fun climbing stairs. I know. With nagging backache, all I'd want is relief. How? Try Doan's pills. Right. Doan's pills are an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. It was a big event, no question about it. The posters were plastered all over New Orleans. Steamboat race, they screamed. New Orleans to St. Louis, between the packets General Stonewall Jackson and the Delta Queen. Excitement was electric, and the betting ran high. From the lowliest freed slave to the most austere Creole banker, everyone had a favorite. And most of the money was on the Delta Queen. She was a beautiful thing to see, a floating palace rising white and shimmering above the levee. Her two stacks belching out the black pitch smoke, which advertised her imminent departure. Well, Mr. Pelton... There she is. Oh, she's a beauty, Colonel Tolliver. I think she's the fastest boat on the river, and I mean to prove it. Come aboard. We'll get you settled. Here, boy. Yes, sir? Take Mr. Paladin's bag to his stateroom. Yes, sir. I sure will. All right, Mr. Paladin. Let's go topside and meet the captain. And what makes you so sure, Captain, that somebody will try to do damage to the Delta Queen? I'm not sure, Mr. Paladin, and I hope I'm wrong. But we must take every precaution. Too much depends on this trip. You see, Mr. Paladin, the Queen is odds-on favorite. The odds are so great, a lot of smart money is riding on the Stonewall Jackson. Of course, there's no doubt about it in my mind. The Queen can beat the Stonewall Jackson in a fair race any day of the week. But it's a long way to St. Louis, better than a thousand miles. And... Anything can happen out there on the river. I'll try to see that it doesn't, Captain. I'm sure you will. Uh, any particular person you're suspicious of? No, no one in particular, Mr. Paladin. Uh-huh. 
Any special instructions? No, just mingle with other passengers, wander around the boat, and keep your eyes and ears open. Ready to cast off, sir? Very well. Shall we start, Colonel? Oh, by all means. Come along, Mr. Feldman. Let's go up to the pilot house. Hey, Colonel, I didn't see the Stonewall Jackson when we came up. She's uh, up the wharf a ways. I'll show you. There. See the side wheeler backing out into the river? That's the Stonewall Jackson. Yes, but she's already cast off. Does that mean that she has started? Oh, no, no. We start from an imaginary line drawn between that church steeple and that big clump of trees across the river. You'll see how we do it, Mr. Fallon. Standing by to cast off. Cast off. Aye, aye, sir. Engine room. Engine room here. Astern half speed. Astern half speed. Uh, Captain, how long do you think it'll take us to get to St. Louis? Well, the Robert E. Lee made it in three days, 18 hours, and 14 minutes, and we aim to better that considerably. Stop engines. Stop engines. Half speed forward. Half speed forward. Uh, do we plan to make many stops, Colonel? No, we'll put in at Natchez, Vicksburg, Memphis, and Carroll. Stop engines. Stop engines. Now that we're coming nicely beam of the Stonewall Jackson, we'll signal him. She signals us, and all we have to do is wait for the start and flag in the cannon. See a shore over there, the flag lowering. Engine room, stand by. Standing by. When the flag gets to the bottom of the pole, the fire of the cannon will be on our way. There she is! Full speed ahead! Another cup of coffee, sir? Uh, just a half, please. You, sir? No, thank you. Uh, have a cigar to go with the coffee, Mr. Paladin? Thank you. Mmm. Wonderful aroma. I have them specially made for me in Havana. Mr. Devereaux? No, thank you. You don't mind, ma'am. Oh, please, go ahead. Thank you. Well... We're clipping right along. I want to pass Baton Rouge in another hour. Can't go too fast to suit my sister and me, right, honey? Oh, yes, Yancey. All I want is to get back home. Oh, your home's in St. Louis? Yes, and I've been away just too long. Uh, what line of work are you in up in St. Louis, Mr. Devereaux? Furs. Wholesale furs. Yeah, it used to be a good business before beaver hats went out of style. It still is. Listen. Listen, something's happened. The engines are stopped. In the middle of the river? Why? I don't know, but why don't you go find out, Mr. Yes, Collins? I think I will. You coming? No. No, I think I'll finish my coffee. What is it, Captain? Why are we stopped? Rudder cable parted, Mr. Paladin. Look here. Cut halfway through with a hacksaw. Exactly. And we, we put a strain on it going around that last sandbar she parted. Well, can you fix it, Captain? Of course I can. Take an hour or more. Meanwhile, the Stonewall Jackson will be out of sight. Mr. Paladin, you have any idea who did this? Well, that's a little difficult to say, Captain, for one thing, it was done while you were lying up at the wharf in New Orleans. How do you know? The cut ends are somewhat rusted, except for the strands that have just parted so they are. So it might or might not have been done by someone who's aboard now. You've talked with our passengers. Do you have any suspicions? No, not really. Now there is one man. He hasn't bothered to introduce himself. He's an interesting fellow. I want to get to know him better. You will look into it, won't you? Indeed I will, Captain. Your cigar, Mr. Paladin? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, have any idea who cut the rudder cable? Oh, why should I? Well, that's why you're aboard, isn't it? To guard against such things? Am I? 
You needn't be alarmed, Mr. Paladin. I won't give away your secret. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Very well. Have it your way. But if you were looking for a ride on a riverboat, you needn't have come this far. You could have taken the Star of the Pacific from San Francisco up the Sacramento River to Stockton. No, Mr. Paladin, you're here because you're paid to be here. How do you know so much about me? Well, I was a reporter on the San Francisco Morning Call a few years back, and it was my business to know about men like you. And because I know you to be a square-shooting fellow, I'm going to give you a little tip. Oh, what's that? Before I was a reporter on the San Francisco Morning Call, I was a reporter on the Virginia City Enterprise. And I recollect a young buck out there that could have been the twin brother of that Yancey Devereaux who shared our table at dinner. Only his name wasn't Yancey Devereaux then. It was the Sierra Kid. But he had a frightening facility with a deck of cards. I could have told you then that boy would grow up to be a big-time gambler. What are you implying? <laughs> I'm implying nothing, Mr. Paladin. And anyway, after that cute little trick with the rudder cable, we may just have lost the race already. You think it's that serious? Well, look for yourself. Upriver there, not a light. Stonewall Jackson's miles out of sight. Bless my soul, fog coming on. This could be disastrous. There's that tricky crossing to be made just above Bayou Sarah. And with the water, it's such a low stage. Come along, Mr. Paladin. Where? Oh, up to the Texas deck. The captain may need some help before this night's over. Say, tell me, how do you know so much about the river, sir? Well, Mr. Paladin, before I was a reporter on the Virginia City Enterprise, I was a Mississippi River pilot. Oh, now, sir, you challenge my credulity. I'm sure I do. But then I've found truth always was stranger than fiction. Evening, Rodney. Oh, come in, Sam. Mr. Paladin, come on in. Well, how's it look? Bad. Very bad. I don't like it at all. That crossing up ahead, uh, has it changed much with the years? Not a great deal. That sycamore snag over toward these banks gone. Give you a little more room to get your stern around. Yeah, but she's built up shoal water there, so it's still risky. Any other changes? No. Otherwise, she's just about the same. Rodney, uh, I'd be honored to take her over that crossing for you. In this fog? The only thing to do, either we get through the crossing in this fog or the race is over. I appreciate this, Sam. No. No, I am in your debt, my friend, to be at the wheel of a packet again. Thank you. Yeah, we're coming into the crossing now. <laughs> but how do you know? You, you can't see a thing. Oh, you learn to feel the river, Mr. Paladin. You just know it. Larboard ledgemen below! Ahoy the bridge! Let's hear how much water you got under you. Aye, sir. Starboard ledgemen! Aye, sir. Let's hear you sound. Aye, sir. Mark three. Mm, well and good. Three. three fathoms. We still have plenty of water, Water's Mr. Paladin. But she'll get shallower and shallower. Half speed, Rodney. Half speed. Half speed. Water less twain. Half less twain. Eight feet. Cut engines, cut engines. We'll drift up to it. All stop. All stop. Seven and a half feet. Yeah. This will be a close thing, Mr. Paladin. We only draw six feet. She's aground. Now, Rodney, full speed ahead. Full ahead. Full speed ahead. Snatch her, Rodney. Help me hold her down. All right. We'll walk her over that tarnation reef. A little more. There's a little more. She's over! 
up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she made it. Oh, she's a good boat. Eight and a half feet. Rodney, mind if I keep the helm for a while? Sam, you've earned it. Keep it all night if you want. Uh, Captain, may yes, I? Yes, Mr. Bell. Uh, I've been talking to this remarkable fellow all evening. I didn't catch his name. Who is he? Him? Well, that's Sam Clemens. He's one of the best pilots that ever took a boat up the river. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergen, why did you stop the car here? I want to talk to that farmer. Oh, mister. Oh, you call me? Why, it's Mortimer Snurd. Oh, where, where? Oh, that's me. <laughs> are there any General Motors dealers around here? Uh, no, no. No, but we got some Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac dealers, though. And some Chevy and GMC truck dealers, too. <laughs> well, Mortimer, those are all General Motors dealers. Oh, well, what do you want to see them all for? Well, I only want to see one for guardian maintenance. Do they make that car, too? No. <laughs> no, that's a service that's available only at General Motors dealer service departments. Oh, I see. Yes, and right now they're featuring complete lubrications, quality appearance services, brake adjustments, and front-end inspections. It's quality work performed by GM trained servicemen at a fair price. Well, that makes good sense even to me. <laughs> Thanks to Mr. Clemens' superb pilotage, we were still in the race. But we still had the Stonewall Jackson to beat, and it was not until late the next day above Vicksburg that we caught up with her. I tell you, it was a brave sight to see that night. The two great steamboats plowing upriver neck and neck, their chimneys hurling sparks to the stars, their great paddle wheels throwing a cloud of spray... I stood on the hurricane deck watching them with Yancey Devereaux and his sister. Oh, like two great thoroughbreds coming down to the finish line. Quite apt, Nancy. Whoever takes the lead now is apt to hold it the rest of the way to St. Louis. Care to bet on who that'll be, Mr. Devereaux? I'm not a betting man, Mr. Paladin, but if I thought the Stonewall Jackson would win the race, I'd be aboard her instead of the Delta Queen, would I not? I don't know. Would you? I would. But whoever wins, we will be in St. Louis this time tomorrow, and that's all that matters to me. <coughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll be off to bed. And miss all the excitement, Yancey? I've had enough for one day. Good night, my dear. Good night, Paladin. Good night, Devereaux. Yes, it is getting late. I believe that oh, I Mr. should... Oh, Mr. Paladin, before you go, I wonder if you would be so kind. Well, of course. What is it you wish? With a window in my stateroom... I just can't seem to get it to come open. I wonder if you could free it for me? Certainly. I'd be glad to, but won't it wait until morning? Why, Mr. Paladin, is there another young lady aboard I didn't know about? Oh, no. No, no. Then surely whatever beckons you can wait till you have done me this little service? Of course. Which is your stateroom? Oh, didn't you know? It's right down here. Come in, won't you? There, now. I do declare this is a lot more cozy than that windy old deck. Now, isn't it, Mr. Paladin? Yes. Yes, indeed, Miss Devereaux. Now, where is this window that sticks? Don't bother with the window, Mr. Paladin. Uh, what? Put your hands up. Oh, I see. You will have the pleasure of my company for the next few minutes, Mr. Paladin. While your brother is down below doing whatever he's doing to gum up the works of the steamboat and lose the race for us? You will remain here with me until he returns. Very well, Miss Devereaux. Say, that's uh, an interesting roommate you have. What are you talking about? Over there, in the corner. That cute little rat. Oh, where? Hey, here, Miss Devereaux, I'll relieve you of that gun if you please. Oh. Somebody should tell your brother, or whoever he is, not to send a girl to do a man's job. I'll scream. I'll have the whole boat down on you. You just do that, honey. You just make it sound real good. Good 
evening, Mr. Paladin. Looks like we're pulling away from them. You alone down here? No, I got a couple of strikers. They're taking it easy behind the border. Did you see anybody come down here, any of the passengers? No, sir. Well, then he came down the after companion way. Come on. What is it, Mr. Paladin? What's wrong? Well, I don't know yet, but tell me this. If somebody wanted to wreck the engines, what could he do to them? Well, he might jimmy up the walking beam if he could, or maybe tamper with the lubrication on the paddle wheel journal box. Well, where are they? Back here, through this passageway. Hey, look. Wait. Devro. He's got a gun. Devro. Come down out of there. Keep your distance, Paladin. He's got the journal box open. I said come down out of there, Devro. <laughs> Keep down. He's got a bucket full of nuts and bolts, metal junk, looks like. I'm warning you, Devro. Come down. Or I'll shoot you down. Don't let him put that junk in that journal box, Mr. Paladin. It'll chew up the drive shaft and freeze it tight. I'll stop him. Merciful. He fell backwards into the paddle wheel. So, even in death he wins. You'd better stop the engines. Not now, Mr. Paladin. What good would it do? He's gone. Yes, I guess you're right. We could never find him now. Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the Be Sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.